Welcome to another edition of the Aggie Sports Report. I'm Lauren Branch. This is a special edition of the Aggie Sports Report because at the time we taped this show, the university was on fall break. So today, we're going to bring you the weekly a t football press conference that was held on Monday, October 18th. But next week, we'll be back with all the highlights, interviews, and features that you're accustomed to. Thanks for watching and enjoy this week's press conference. I'm Lauren Branch. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come out this afternoon. In just a few moments, you will hear um, from our chancellor, Dr. Harold L. Martin, Sr., in reference to the Josp and Andre Malandu case. Following the chancellor's comments, um, he will be taking questions. I will ask um, that the members of the press uh, be respectful of one another. I want to allow each of you the opportunity to uh, address the chancellor with at least one question. And uh, following the questions, um, we will then uh, close the briefing. Here's our chancellor. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. And so, good afternoon. On yesterday, the North Carolina Office of the Chief Medical Examiner released the autopsy report for our former student, Jospin Andre Malandu, showing that he died as a result of complications of sickle cell trait. Andre, a sophomore from Nightdale, North Carolina, was described by his peers as a caring, kind-hearted young man. His presence on this campus has been and will continue to be missed at North Carolina NT State University. This continues to be a sad time for the university family, the Department of Athletics, and one beyond measure for the Malandu family. As a parent, my heart continues to ache for, the Andres, for Andre's family and his friends. We deeply regret Andre's loss. Since my arrival here at North Carolina NT State University, I have consistently stressed the importance of adherence to university policies practices and procedures. With all university administrators, this has been reaffirmed throughout my tenure, and even more so since this tragic incident. I commit to you that I will take constructive steps to move our athletics program in a different direction. Today, I have discontinued the employment of our athletics director, Wheeler Brown. I've asked Dr. Deborah Calloway, special assistant to the chancellor, to assume administrative responsibilities and oversight for the immediate future until an interim athletics director is named within the next week. I will immediately launch a national aggressive search for a new leader of our athletics program. This new leadership for athletics will be expected to bring significant managerial and leadership skills, knowledge of athletics, the ability to develop a high performing organization, and the ability to manage the necessary cultural changes to ensure the enhanced services, transparency, and individual accountability I desire and demand here at North Carolina NT State University. Let us continue to pray for the Manandu family. We'll now open it up for questions. I will ask that um, in addition to us taking the opportunity to allow each outlet to have a <coughs> question, I'd ask that you avoid questions that the chancellor cannot answer, those specifically related to HIPAA and FERPA. They're protected and those are personnel or health related type questions that we cannot answer. Um, we're open for questions. Yeah. Why and how were prospective athletes allowed to participate without this person? From our investigation, uh, we find that mistakes were made. And as a result of those mistakes being made, the unfortunate tragic accident occurred on our campus. Can you get a little more specific about those mistakes? The mistakes were uh, related to an unauthorized, unplanned athletic event, a tryout in this case, uh, of being allowed to occur uh, outside of our policies and best practices. Yes. 
Um, on my count, this is going to be the fourth athletic director that's been terminated by this university in the last 10 years. That's a remarkable period of instability. What, as um, new chancellor here, are you planning to doing to improve that, that record? Uh, we seek to launch a national aggressive search to identify what I would consider to be the kind of talent we need, experienced talent, uh, someone who shares comparable values that I have, uh, who will be able to provide the necessary leadership that we need for a much longer period of time for athletics here at North Carolina A&T. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, last week, again, well, our loss against Delaware, St Delaware State was a tough loss. Um, you know, we had worked hard all week. Um, Coach Lee and the rest of the coaching staff had prepared us with a, um, a great game plan on how to stop the guys, you know. But um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we weren't able to come out with the win. So, you know, that was definitely a, t a tough loss. Um, as far as this week, um, you know, getting ready to play Howard, um, we we're looking forward to it. You know, we beat them last year, so we plan on, and we intend on doing the same this week. So I really look forward to um, getting ready for practice and just putting in the work, you know, to finally get this first win. Good afternoon also. And from, uh, from an offensive standpoint, I feel like uh, Coach, he put us in a good position. Coach Barry, our offensive coordinator, put us in a good position to be very effective against him. And in the, in the, early, in the early quarters, we were moving it good, doing good work. We, we stalled a little bit in the second half, but I, I don't think it was – I don't think it was their defense stopping us. It was mostly us not executing the way we should. And for this week, we know we got to go back to the drawing board and put a game plan together. And I think we can be more successful than we were this previous week against Delaware. George, why don't you suck your profession? Let's go and fill us in because uh, a lot of people, I guess, who didn't go to the game didn't understand why you come out after halftime. So yeah. Well, the, de the details on the concussion were fuzzy because it actually happened on a, it was a pass play when I scrambled and I got hit. And I think it was um, initially I had thought it was just the, the initial blow. But it, uh, when I went back and watched film, there was a, uh, there was a sub subsequent hit where I was on the ground and I got hit and my helmet jarred the ground. And then I actually ran the play right after that. And then I came out. And it, it may have been confusing to everybody because I think the play that I came out on was actually a third down or a punt or field goal situation. So when I didn't return, I mean, that, that's probably why people had questions. But well, I mean, what was your, uh, your, your mentality? I mean, did you feel cobwebs or anything? I mean, how, how did you know you had a concussion on the coaching staff? I wasn't, actually, I wasn't sure. I knew when coming off the field after the second play, I couldn't get my balance. I knew something was wrong. I wasn't sure it was a concussion. I mean, at that point, when I, I went over to the sideline, I was talking to the doctor, and he was explaining to me, he was asking me what I was feeling. I told him I was feeling a little dizziness, and I just didn't feel like myself, and I wanted to sit down. That's when he said it may be a possible concussion. When did you find out you were going to start? Um, I actually didn't find out. I wasn't 100% sure until Saturday morning. I know I had put in a good week of work, and I had been getting some reps with the first offense, and there was a possibility. And I just, um, I mean, I just stayed prepared. Uh-huh. Um, all week uh, during practice and everything, Coach Lee as well as uh, Coach Johnson, our defensive coordinator, he um, expresses the importance of, you know, forcing turnovers. So uh, um, throughout the week, we work hard on stripping, um, pass drops, you know, and just good form tackling because we feel like if we're able to force turnovers, you know, that'll be able to help our offense to score. So throughout the week, we, we pay a lot of attention to detail and just working on ways to turn over and get the ball back into our offense hands. So. That read you just made, did you see something in the, in the offense that helped you be in position for that interception? Um, you know, we were, um, I want to say we were playing cover seven on that play. So um, my responsibility was to get to the flats. And honestly, the reason I was able to get the pit was because of my, our corner. He um, did such a great job on the receiver. I'm not sure if he tipped it or hit him, but 
luckily I was in the right place at the right time, and the ball went up in the air, and I was able to make a play on it. So, yeah. I'm you, what, what you, what you the <clears throat> on a good day, I'll run a 4-4 on a good day. Yes, sir. Well, um, honestly, you know, I just tell them that, um, you know, everything that happens, it happens for a reason. Um, you know, of course, we're going through tough times. We might not understand why it's happening, but um, I'm a firm believer. I'm not trying to get religious, but I just feel like God doesn't make any mistakes. So I let the guys know, you know, um, just stay focused, even though things aren't going the way that we want them to go. You know, just stay focused and keep working hard, and eventually everything will fall into place. So, yeah. So, Jeremy, why are you guys going to be successful this week in the South? Um, we're planning on, like um, George said, just going back to the drawing boys. We're going to work hard, um, you know, and um, I'm sure Coach Lee and the guys, they'll put, set up a, another great game plan for us, to, um, you know, to, to um, just prepare and just do well. And if we execute the way we're supposed to, I feel like we really can get this win, you know, um, <clears throat> with Howard. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to watch film on them yet, but I feel like if we play our game, you know, just do what we're supposed to do, we'll be okay. You got any friends on that team? No, sir, I don't. George, what's tougher, facing a flamethrower on the mound or facing a, a tough defense in the quarterback position? Uh, it just depends. Uh, if you're talking about a left-handed flamethrower on the mound, then that's a lot tougher than facing the defense. But, I mean, it's just it's, – it's a different mindset, actually. Like, football, you got – you know what I'm saying? You got more time to read, you got to react, you can study, as opposed to baseball. When the guy's a flamethrower, I mean, it's just, it's just hands. You don't have time to think. You know what I'm saying? Football, you get to think. And I, and I enjoy that about the game. And you can be a lot more emotional in football than you can in baseball. Do you ever wish that you had uh, maybe probably uh, played two sports sooner? I mean, in retrospect, I mean, it's always you, you think of things you could have done differently. But at the same time, I mean, like he said, every, uh, God puts you in positions and everything happens for a reason. So I, I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Sharp, <laughs> I thought you had a title last week, last time you were here, but then you, you, then you got here with the bow tie. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm going to have to give it to Georgia. You know, it, it's hard to keep up with George. Every other week, you know, he has something that's, that's flashy. So I definitely have to say George, best dress. That's just my opinion. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Coach will give us his opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Coach. Good afternoon. Uh, again, another uh, uh, gloomy day. Good day, but it's gloomy. Uh, again, uh, you know, we, we fought a, a tough battle. We fought hard and different things like that and, uh, you know, came up short. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely definitely a tough situation. But it's a situation, again, uh, you know, when you go back and you look at film, uh, we continue to grow. Uh, I feel great uh, about, uh, you know, our quarterback situation right now. Uh, uh, George is definitely an outstanding uh, talent, and uh, you know it's it's really a blessing that he's come along and really picked up the offense uh, in a quick fashion. Uh, you know, uh, I know it was a shock to everybody uh, and different things. I said we were going to stir the pot up, and I didn't even bring his name up last week, uh, uh, basically because, uh, you know, I wanted to go ahead and stir that pot up real well. Uh, yes, he didn't know that he was going to start until Saturday morning. Uh, gave him the nod and say, uh, you're going to be the man today uh, and different things. Uh, didn't want him to get nervous, but uh, wasn't no nervous uh, 
uh, Bones Enema. He went out and, you know, that first play about a nine or ten minute drive and scored. You know, that's the type of offense that that uh, uh, I foreseen in the beginning of the season. Uh, you know, made a couple great throws there uh, uh, in key situations, ball right on target and different things like that. Uh, you know, those are things that uh, we expect out of a quarterback uh, and different things. So that was a, a pleasant, a pleasant situation right there. Uh, it's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, defensively, you know, we we played up and down Saturday. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we gave up a big touchdown right there before half that I, I – uh, don't think we should have given up uh, and different things, but, uh, you know, it happened. Uh, you know, we did get the big turnover for a touchdown, which was great. Uh, you know, we've, we've always worked on disturbing the ball and trying to make it happen there. Uh, so it was a great situation in, in that happening. But, you know, we just have to continue to work hard uh, defensively. Uh, I don't like points. <laughs> I like them on offense, but I hate them on defense. Uh, so we're going to have to continue to work and push on defense to, to get it all better. Uh, is our psyche great? Our psyche is still uh, outstanding. Uh, we still have great things to look forward to. Uh, is 0-7 great? No, it's not. Uh, you know, but I look at the old story, you know, uh, goes way back when uh, when uh, uh, Wisconsin goes in uh, uh, to play uh, Michigan uh, 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 back early on and and you know uh, Michigan uh, Wisconsin was really beating them seemed like every time they scored uh, uh, the crowd got louder and they were they were in Michigan and, and folks were wondering you know why in the world you commentators wondering why in the world the crowd getting louder and they're getting louder every time they scored well the crowd was actually listening to the World Series on the radio listening to Detroit uh, win the World Series and different things so every time Detroit is scored they were getting louder and louder and louder and different things so you know I got my ears uh, listening to the heartbeat of this team and 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 if I seem excited I'm still excited about what's going on with this team I'm still excited about all of our possibility yes we just have four games left but uh, I'm excited about our possibilities for the future I'm excited about when I can go into compliance and he tells me uh, 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 coach you'll be around 917 with uh, your APR for your yearly rate and your scholarship level will be able to go back up some more uh, I'm excited about those things. So we're winning the inside battles. It may not look good to the crowd or the commentators, but if you're listening to the radio, uh, listening to what's going on in those inside battles, uh, we're winning some battles here uh, at a and It's going to make a difference. You talk about the APR you just mentioned. Um, I know that was a big hit for your program last, last year. Yes, yes. Uh, look like our yearly rate going to be around 917. That's going to push us up, so we'll be able to come out of that penalty phase some next year. Uh, we'll be able to revamp uh, some of those scholarships. Right now we're at 44.5. Hopefully we can go up between 57 uh, and, 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 and 59 or 60 uh, next year, which would be a huge, which would be huge for us. You know, now we can, you know, don't have to be sitting here and, you know, when one quarterback go down, we don't have any of a great ones that we can look at. You know, we're going to have, uh, you know, I'll be able to go out and get uh, three more quarterbacks. I love to have five good quarterbacks on on the roster. Uh, uh, there's no doubt about that. You know, again, another good, solid recruiting class will definitely help us out. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about that. So I was excited about that yearly mark of uh, uh, 917. Yes, yes. We're winning those individual battles in the classroom. Uh, we're maintaining people, you know, uh, uh, and different things. Guys are winning in the classroom. We'll have some some uh, graduates, uh, that Detroit connection on, on, the, on the defensive line. Those guys will have about five or six guys that are graduating uh, here in, in, uh, in December, uh, midterm. And, and uh, you know, uh, that's, that's, a, uh, that's great. That's great. We're doing a better job uh, in 
in the classroom. We're maintaining people. So uh, that APR is a yearly rate will go up. And then, you know, we have another great year. Uh, the following year, you know, we'll be, be totally out of it uh, in the following year. So, you know, those are battles that we need to win. You know, it, it's no doubt about it. I'm very optimistic about uh, our season and, and going into it. But, you know, it, it's tough going in. You got 44.5 and everybody else has 63, you know, uh, uh, in that second half, in that fourth quarter, you know, when folks are keeping people fresh and rotating, you don't have any rotation. Your rotation is, is walk-ons and different things like that you're trying to work in. And uh, we're going to do the best. And like I said, I, I never stepped out with any excuses. That's why you never really heard me talk about this much. All I talk about is winning and trying to make a difference. And, and we're going to keep talking that way. But those are individual battles that I have to bring out uh, because we're winning those individual battles. Can you talk about your quarterback situation because it's coming with you? <laughs> <laughs> George, my, all the way. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, talk with the trainer, and uh, they'll be evaluating him daily. Uh, but they say he can't uh, practice as long as he doesn't hit him. We we don't hit the quarterback anyway. So <laughs> so we, we're we looking forward to him. I, I was just so excited about, you know, the way he played and, and just his poise. Just just seeing him just sit up here today, you know. He, he's a poised young man, uh, you know, a man with uh, great character. And uh, I was asking him on the, on the ride over here, son, where, where have you been? Why why didn't you come out last year uh, when I first got here and different things? But, but uh, you know, I, I can remember the day he came out. The coach, I was the man in high school at quarterback. I said, okay, son, we're we definitely struggling there. We're going to give you an opportunity. And he just kept on rolling, kept on being in every meeting, kept on doing the extra. Uh, the first guy I seen when I rolled up this morning, uh, was George ready to watch film and different things like that and I took him right in we started watching film and going over uh, the different things you know he's uh, he's more than just an uh, athlete that wants it he you know he's a guy that wants to be a student of the game and the guys see that his leadership on the field uh, let's go guys you know and all those things uh, the guys really see that and that made the difference in us uh, uh, saying uh, we're going to give him the start and nod uh, this past weekend so he he, he's our guy going down the stretch, no doubt about it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ricky does a good job. Webb does a good job. But uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, George can do all the things. He can he can do the things from the Wildcat. He can do the things that you know. He definitely can pass the heck out of the ball. He has a rifle. Uh, no doubt about that, and he's accurate. Uh, so we're going, you know, we still go, we'll do a little rotation with the Wildcat, but he's going to be our guy. He's going to be our guy. He's going to be the one that we're going to lay our hat on uh, going down this final stretch. Just have to learn him. Uh, you know, I say, son, you, you're a baseball player. You definitely supposed to know how to slide. Uh, you know, uh, just got to get him back in the sliding mode instead of taking those hits. He grabs we, – we did not hold a, hold a spade with him this past week. He grasped the system, you know, because he put the work in to learn the system. Yeah, and he said that his first out, Coach, I'm a quick learner. I'm a quick learner. And, you know, what a man puts into it, you know, uh, 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 you you definitely seen it. We didn't hold anything on Saturday. We didn't have to limit our offense, uh, you know, uh, uh, like we've done with the other other young men and different things like that. Uh, uh, you know, it was just a pleasure being able to run our offense. And you seen Aggie offense in that first drive. You know, we, we ate up about nine and a half minutes off that clock and scored. That's the offense that we're talking about. That's that's the type of a uh, situation that we're talking about. That's when you can really see uh, the true uh, character of our offense and the true uh, offensive coordinator that I have in Coach Chenisbury, who does a, a great job and, and uh, never works on a clock uh, and different things. So uh, I'm just excited uh, about uh, the possibilities for our offense going down this final stretch. Well, Howard University, uh, you know, again, they uh, have an old Bernard that used to be down there at Cookman, so they run the option, uh, uh, you know. Uh 
Uh, do they have all the people to do that? Uh, you know, they're still getting a turnaround there, but they, they run it pretty well. They're doing some attack things uh, on defense and different things like that. Uh, you know, they're struggling a little bit. Uh, I think their only victory was uh, Lincoln University and different things. Uh, but, uh, you know, they have some talent, but, uh, you know, they have a change around on offense and they're, they're trying to make it happen there. So, you know, we just have to go and match up. Uh, you know, uh, it's all about a assignment football on defense. Uh, we have to do the things that we need to do on defense and, uh, you know, go out and uh, play play a, a good brand of offense and, uh, you know, we can get these guys. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind about it, but it's going to be uh, up to us, you know, executing and protecting the ball. You know, uh, you know Saturday, we – we turn the corner if we can protect the ball. Uh, no doubt about that. We have a chance to come back down the field if we can protect the ball. And we gave up uh, uh, two big turnovers uh, with Larry Raper and, and Webb on uh, two big fumbles that cost us one, one for a touchdown and the other one turned into a touchdown. Well, um, you know, uh, my mindset is right now I can't be distracted. I have to I have to win. I have to do what uh, he brought me in here to do, and that, and that's when, uh, and different things. My my heart definitely goes out to him and his family, uh, but you know, I, uh, the chancellor made a decision, and and uh, different things like that. And we all have to stick with his decision. He's the the boss of it all, and uh, you know, he has a vision for the university, uh, and different things. Yes, it, it's very heartening. You know, he Will uh, Brown is a good friend and the man that brought me in and believed in me. So you know, I'm gonna. Try Try to carry the ship on and, and, and different things and do the things that I have to do and get ready for uh, the next person that will be at, at, at the helm uh, and different things and uh, take my, my vision and my dream to him and, uh, you know, hopefully things will work out for the betterment.